Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. Real low, real, real, real low carbs. It just works. Got my little cuppa here, and um, I hope everything is going well for you guys. I know that um, I've, I've been hearing from some people that have been struggling with some non-keto foods, as well as struggling with the BBC's Better Bad Choices of Keto Foods that still keep them binging. And my heart goes out to them. There, um, I'm going to post it below. It's um, a doctor, and I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name, but I watched him on the Diet Doctor podcast. And uh, it's brought to you by Dr. Brett Shore, and he is a cardiologist. It is just a great podcast to get into Diet Doctor podcast. This doctor's name, um, Dr. Sues or Cues. Anyway, he dives into emotional eating in a way that I've never seen or heard before. And I've been around emotional eating issues for like the last 50 years. So it's great to, I don't know, it's just the way he presents it. And um, he does weight loss surgery. And so it's just very, very interesting. So I know that there are a lot of people that are struggling right now. And I'm not quite sure. I mean, there can't be a common thread, but it's making people eat to mask or feel better for their emotional issues. And I just, I feel really bad that um, this is happening. And I don't, you know, I can't stop anybody, prevent anybody from having foods that, that just derail them and sometimes it can be too much of a good thing, you know, eating twice the protein you're supposed to, or um, eating too much fat, drinking fat. Um, I think we all did that a few years ago when keto came on strong and we were all having the, the bulletproof coffees and everything else. And I think that that's kind of gone away a little bit. And we see that there's just a regular way of eating. Um, I got my hair cut yesterday and, and one of the hair cutters and um, her client, you know, they were bashing keto. You know, so much fat. It's just not good for you. <laughs> I just, you know, I just kind of smiled because it's like, I don't think I'm having a lot of fat anymore. I think that since I upped my protein, maybe it's a different name than keto. I don't know. It's definitely moderate fat and higher protein. Um, when I hear the Hulkies talk about, you know, having more protein, they're having two to 300 grams of protein a day. I'm talking about having, you know, 85 to 100 grams of protein a day. And that seems to be quite satiating. It gets the job done. I don't need as much fat. And yet I am having fats. You know, I cook things in butter. I warm up my beef and butter and or, and or um, bacon grease. And, um, delish, by the way. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's very, very interesting to, um, I don't know, un try to understand the dynamics of what makes us emotionally eat. Now, I know that there's like bottomless pits of hunger. I've experienced that where you just, you just can't get enough. It, it's like, you just can't stop eating. And then there are other times where suddenly something has been eaten and it's like, what caused that? I, I thought I was in a good space. So I do a lot of those videos of the headless horseman. And I always talk about the halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And I add on an S on either end for stressed or sick. And um, for me, my two headless men have always been stressed <laughs> and, um, and hungry uh, and tired, so stressed and tired. And when I get either one of those, I get a little bit more fragile. You know, I know that if it's like, I don't know, I eat my meals around three and on work nights, I go to bed at 4.30 and on non-work nights, I go to bed at seven. So I have a few hours after I eat. I used to have the nighttime eating habit. It was awful. That's all I can tell you. And um, I manage it by not doing it. 
and there's no easy way around it. I always thought that substituting the um, bowl of something that you have with a spoon, I could have, you know, carrots or celery or peanut butter on crackers. I don't know, anything but the sugar. And, and of course, substituting something for something and having it at night is still nighttime eating. It's a practice. It's a practice that just doesn't fare thee well. And, it, you know, it kicks off your blood sugar again. And I've always felt that if you have the proper evening meal or last meal of the day, then you should feel satiated enough to get to your next meal the next day. We all don't eat OMAD. Some of us are three meals a day. Some of us are too mad. And if you're like my other friend, you're lots of mad. <laughs> and so knowing what you need to have with your last meal of the day to get you through to your first meal of the day is key. I've, I've never felt that anything I've eaten after dinner was needed. It's kind of like carbs. You don't really need them. And I think that sugar today has such a pull on us that we are, we're just in dangerous territory, just being where we are in the United States or Canada or Australia or any place with the pull, the pull, the pull, sugar, sugar, sugar. It's in absolutely everything. And if we look back at foods that we had before, we didn't have sugar in our bread. We might have had a sweet bread, but it was more like a cake without frosting, right? Um, and so, you, you know, that our world today is just so filled with sweet. I still like my coffee with a bit of sweet in it. And um, that's like, you know, I've always said, it's like my keto pizza. It's just something that keeps me from overeating, from binging, from a compulsiveness with putting food in my mouth without even knowing I'm doing it. Do any of you do that? Mm. And so, um, you know, you, this is the N equals one study. And a lot of us have success with our keto, our carnivish, our carnivore. And then suddenly we find that we're eating more of something, um, either a good food or maybe not a non-keto food. And it's like, where is this coming from? And sometimes it's hard to identify, you know, sometimes um, being stressed or feeling just bottomless pit hungry, you know, it, there's something in there that that needs addressing it, and it's not easy. And sometimes, I don't know, I've, I've damaged myself quite a bit looking for the it in why the food is suddenly being abused again. I don't like that feeling. I know that none of you do. When you write me privately, yeah, I know the remorse and the, the, the disgust that you feel with yourself. It's, it's so, so hard. And I, I just, I always feel bad when people tell me because I want to hug them back into a clean, abstinent way of eating. Sometimes, I think, just me, is that if you're having more food than you know you need, you know, there's that line that we cross where it's like, nope, I think I had three ounces too many of that. Um, that uh, if you plan it, if you are a tracker and you put it into your tracker, that you're having, you know, a little bit more of the something, something, but it's planned maybe <clears throat> the next time it won't be an overeating sort of thing. It'll be a planned extra food thing, <coughs> excuse me. And you're able to um, handle it better. It doesn't cause the, I want more, I want more. Because planning more food to see how that sits, see how you feel, how's your belly, how's the scale, How's your head to see how all those things work out? Maybe you do need a little bit more food. John, I F your keto, um, messaged me and said he worries I'm not getting enough food. And and I kind of, you know, kind of chuckled because it's like, um, how sweet of you, you know, and, and I have up my food. You know, I've added about a hundred calories to my food and um feels good. Yeah. 
feels good. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe it's going from three eggs to four eggs. I've been buying smaller eggs, <clears throat> not the jumbo size. So, um, or maybe it's like, you know, an ounce or two more of the protein that you've planned. But if, if you do do that and you're feeling more satiated, less head stuff. It's time to eat. What time does the clock say? Clock says you can eat. When we do that crazy clock watching thing. Yeah, I think that that was a free gift from Weight Watchers in my head. Clock watching. Always hungry. That's Weight Watchers, of course. You know, you eat a fruit and then, of course, you're hungry 30 seconds later. So, to me, the key in what I've been doing for the last, I think, maybe eight months or so is definitely adding more protein. I doubled my protein. I was having like 35 to 40 grams of protein, and then I doubled that. And now, like I said, I'm like 85 to 100 grams. It works, although yesterday I had 130 grams, and that... I don't know. It just it just kind of works. My body seems to respond better to that. I think that's a secret that um, you know a lot of women you know don't know yet is that their body might want more protein and less fat, and maybe that is the um, maybe that's the modified keto that could work for you. It's working for me. Um, you know, my fats yesterday I think were sixty eight grams. And my protein was, yeah, it was high yesterday. It was like one, 129 grams, but it worked. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be eating again for 15, 16 more hours and till tomorrow because I'm taping this right before I go to work. And so anyway, I'm just suggesting that maybe this, this could work for you. And, um, you know, it takes care of that eating too much, that binging, that bottomless pit, Try it. Really make a concerted effort to up your protein. Just try it for a week. You can always go back, right? So this has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. And my carbs are low, 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 low. Way under five total um, during the week. And because um, I'm not having veg, that's why. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. It's, it's just great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye for now.